Have you ever been faced with a situation where you've got a lot of gains in your long stock, but you're worried that the stock could face downside pressure? The protective collar might make a lot of sense. So again, you're worried about downside pressure in the stock, selling in the stock, but the trade-off for this protection is you've got to be willing to sell your stock higher. So let's go ahead and define the protective collar. First of all, you need to be long 100 shares for each collar that you construct. And the way you're going to construct this is you're going to sell one out-of-the-money call to fund buying one out-of-the-money put of the same expiration. And lastly, this is going to have limited upside and limited downside. So let's check out the PL graph here. So as you can see here, in the protective collar, you'll notice that there's a regular covered call or a regular covered overwrite. So imagine if you're long stock and then you sell a call, well, your upside is capped, right? So you're selling a call in this structure, but you're also buying a put. So your downside is also capped. So remember, you've got a lot of gains in your stock, limited upside, limited downside. Your biggest concern is that the stock is going to fall and you want to protect your gains. Let's go ahead and look at some formulas for a sec. So your maximum profit, if this is a net debit, so debit means you're paying for the structure, that's going to be call strike minus stock purchase price minus the net premium paid. Now, what happens if this is a net credit? Well, your max profit, if it's a net credit, call strike minus stock purchase price plus the net premium collected. What's the max loss if this is a net debit? Your max loss is going to be the put strike minus the stock purchase price minus the net premium paid. What's the max loss if it's a net credit? Well, it's going to be the put strike minus the stock purchase price plus the net premium collected. Also, let's look at our break evens. If it's a net debit, it's your stock purchase price plus the net premium paid. What's your break even if it's a net credit? Stock purchase price minus net premium received. The way I like to set up these trades is by collecting premium. So I like to set these trades up for a net credit. 